Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making some Easter decor uh, with eggs and nests and um, and we're going to start with this air dry clay. I had bought some that uh, I felt like was a real good deal on Amazon uh, but it doesn't pull out of the molds well so it wasn't such a great deal after all and I'm just going to be using this up for different projects and I thought uh, with the help of my daughter, we would just make up a bunch of little eggs, and we let those dry overnight, and now I'm going to paint those with with some homemade uh, robin's egg blue. I'm taking the Dixie Belle and the vintage duck egg and mixing a little white with it, and I thought it looked a lot like the robin's egg blue, and I'm just going to paint a bunch of these up. Now, if you're particular about getting your hands dirty, then this is probably not the craft for you because you are going to get a mess with these. I found no other way to do it except just to get in there and get messy. Uh, there's just, there's not any way to paint them other than that. So, when I do crafts like this, I just do a bunch up at a time so that I can just go ahead and get dirty and clean up later and then when I go to do my crafts I don't have to worry about this messy part uh, so the first eggs that I'm working on are these clay eggs and and then uh, we're going to be moving on to some little styrofoam eggs that I found at the Dollar Tree that um, they're to hang in those little miniature trees I guess um, and uh, so I'm going to paint those up also and uh so my first idea was to hold on to that little, uh, the little loop that they hang with so that I didn't have to get so much on my hands, but that was a fail because it just kept moving anyway and I just ended up having to hold on to that egg again, but uh, it covered well anyway and these little eggs have like a little, um, like a glittery outside coating on them and I started to try to sand that off and ended up trying to paint over it anyway and had no problem covering it so that saved me a lot of time and I just uh, painted these up also and then the next eggs that I that I'm working with will be they're made just like this they're the same they're the styrofoam and they're also glittery and colorful like this uh, but they're a larger egg and uh they they come on like a, I guess like a, a skewer stick, uh, but it's a little smaller than a skewer stick. And I liked working with those better because uh, they're a lot easier to hold on to. And so it just went a lot quicker. And But I didn't want to do these in the robin's egg blue because uh, I felt like they were too big for robin's eggs. And I wanted some natural eggs anyway. So with these, all I had to do was pull that little ribbon off that was hot glued on. And now I'm just going to paint these with the uh, drop cloth from uh, Dixie Belle. Now I thought this color worked out really well just to look like natural eggs without being too white. And again, one coat seemed like it covered pretty well. So uh, I just gave all these one coat and... There might have been a few that I had to touch up somewhat, but uh, for the most part, one coat covered these. And um, so I got all those painted up. And then I found these little half dozen carton eggs at the Dollar Tree. And I think these are just as cute as they can be. Um, I love that they're all speckled, uh, but they're not very realistic looking and definitely not very primitive looking and so uh, we're going to paint these also now these i'm going to go with the off-white also with the uh, drop cloth color uh, but um, one coat didn't cover these well uh, because they're such a slick finish um, but but I didn't mind and I, I didn't go back and do a second coat because I'm going to be decoupaging over these anyway. Uh, so one coat was enough uh, for me to decoupage over. So I just laid those aside and while those are drying then I get started on our first project. And the first project that we're, we're going to do is, um, is a little wall hanging. A little primitive wall hanging and I had some old fencing board 
Uh, I say old fencing board. This is a new fencing board, but I've just cut the top off of it. I use uh, fencing board a lot because it's uh, very easy to work with. It sands easily, cuts easily, and um, and also it's very inexpensive. So I just cut a little section off the top, and, and that doesn't have to be any certain amount. This is maybe 10 inches long, and I'm just attaching a little... Um, one of those little th hooks that you hang on a little um, picture hanger thing, I guess. Um, sorry, I don't have the technical name for that. And I've just drilled a little hole in this um, spoon and, and I attach it to uh, the lower end of this uh, fencing board. Now I painted this ahead of time and, and I'm here I'm distressing with a wet wipe because I've used chalk paint so you can do that but I didn't like the look that I was getting because that silver came through and um, and so I, I do go back later and add a little bit of antiquing wax to it but um, and I could have left this just the uh, the aged silver look uh, but I just felt like it wouldn't be enough contrast with the board and I do plan on putting a little piece of fabric at the top of this, and it's going to be this drop cloth color. color. So uh, I felt like I needed to paint this first. And then I'm just going to attach it here at the bottom with just a little short screw. And uh, But now you could omit drilling the hole altogether if you don't have a drill or you don't like to work with a drill. Uh, you, could just, uh, you could just glue this on. I don't think hot glue would hold. Uh, but you could use the E6000 or the Gorilla Glue, and I, I think it would probably hold just as well. Or we could have drilled into the wood and just used wire to wire it on instead. And then it's ready for the next step. Now what we're going to do, because this is Easter decor here, we're going to uh, just make a little makeshift nest in that little spoon. And uh, we're going to do that by just taking some Spanish moss and just gluing it kind of in a circle in that spoon. And uh, so I just kind of keep pulling it out to the edges and shaping that edge. Now this one doesn't have to be perfect at all because, you know, it's very small and we just kind of want the illusion of a nest. Uh, so... Uh, as long as you make it look like somewhat of a nest, it's, it's going to be really pretty regardless of how much shaping you do. And I'm just kind of adding a little extra hot glue here because this does need to be secured well to the spoon since it is going to be hanging on the wall. And I just keep adding a little bit of hot glue until I get the look that I want and then it'll be ready to add the little eggs. And... This is the one where we'll be using those little clay eggs because they're very small. And when I add eggs to a nest, I like to add them in threes. I, I just, I don't know why, but I think it just looks better to, uh, to add them in threes. And then when I, when I lay those eggs in there also, I, I like to turn them in a little bit different direction uh, because I feel like that looks more organic and it just has a prettier look, I think. And now I'm just gonna cut a little piece of fabric to go on the top because I'm gonna be writing a little word there with my stamps. Now, if you don't have one of these spoons, you could use a, one of those little strainers and uh, you could either bend the strainer part up a little bit or you could just lay it flat on there and put your nest inside. Um, and I'm sure if you think about it, there's a lot of little items that you could use to put a nest on if you didn't have this uh, particular kind of spoon. Now here I'm using just some tea towel and I keep this on hand because I like to coffee stain it and then, uh, and then use it uh, for different projects. I generally like to rip this type of fabric in most of my fabrics because I like that frayed edge, but uh, this small of a piece I wouldn't be able to do that with, so I just cut it the size I want, and then I just take my nails and pull at it, and it'll fray that way also.
And now I'm just stamping the word nest on here with my little wooden stamps. And I like the lowercase with this primitive look uh, because, I, I don't know, I just feel like it has more of a primitive look to it. And I don't worry about measuring with the, with the letter placement because if you're a little bit off, that just adds to the primitive homemade look. And I, I just like that look. Now here I'm just tying some little strips of fabric together and some twine and and uh, just making a little makeshift bow. Uh, with these little primitive bows, you want to make them just as simple as you can because if you get too elaborate with them, it just takes away from the primitive look. Uh, you could even just take one little piece of burlap and tie something around the center and make a bow that way for this one. But that's all there was to this little wall hanging. I thought it turned out really cute. And now we're ready to move on to that little half dozen carton. And I'm just going to glue some uh, Spanish moss in each of these. And uh, I do put too much in them. And I have to go back and take some out because I, I don't have enough room for those eggs. But that's fine because once you put the eggs in and get them glued in well, then uh, you can just tuck some of that back in. Uh, so here I'm making some uh, homemade decoupage paper. And I do that by taking the very back from a three-ply napkin and just stamping on that and making one of my prints. And since I'm using the black and white uh, theme here, then I'm going to also use that um, buffalo, the black and white buffalo plaid there that you see in that napkin. And so on that one, I'll just use the front ply of the paper. And uh, it really works well for decoupage. So once I get all these decoupaged, then I just lay them aside to let them dry. And then uh, we will be ready to move on to uh, the next step. Obviously, I let these dry and now they're ready to place in our little carton. And I just uh, glue these in with just a little dab of hot glue. And once I get them placed in there, and I want to make sure that my patterns are separated, that I don't have any two of the same pattern together because I have done two eggs uh, of each pattern. And uh, once I get those placed in there, then uh, that's all that there is to this one. Uh, I, I do go back and add some of the moss in between and I just kind of tuck it here and there until I get the look that I like and um and that's all that there that there was to this I hope you guys are, in, are enjoying this content and I hope that if you are that you'll consider subscribing if you haven't and if you have subscribed uh, I really appreciate you guys and I, I really appreciate all the sweet comments and there that one is complete and now we're ready to move on to our last project and uh this one i just i just love this one i think this one's my favorite uh but uh, i'm just using this little wood disc just as a base now you can use anything you want uh, you can cut a little piece of cardboard i just happen to have this one laying handy and just used it but i'm going to make a little nest here and this one you just kind of have to build uh, the other one, you know, it can be just uh, very uh, haphazard, but this one uh, I like to just kind of keep adding and building until I get this one to look more like an actual nest. And so I just add a little bit of hot glue, a little bit of this moss, and then I just kind of pinch that inside down and the outside, I just kind of pinch it uh, to shape it. And it just kind of happens uh, over a little bit of time. It doesn't take long at all to build this one. Um, but I don't even speed this process up. So you can see how quickly it does come together. But you do have to maneuver it a little bit. And that's okay because just think how long it takes those little birds to get it built. Here I'm just gluing a little bit of that green moss in the center because uh, obviously, you know, they use different materials when they make these nests. And I'm just kind of pinching out, pushing down, squishing together until I get that shape that I want. And then this is a trick that I saw on Pinterest and I'm just using hairspray. And this makes me think of Aquanet hairspray. 
If you grew up as a teenager in the in the eighties, then you know what I'm talking about because we had to have that poofy hair, and we had to uh, spray that Aquanet until we had these two big wings on the side. But we couldn't have done it without our Aquanet. Now here's another wood slice, but I, I had my husband cut this one really thick, and it's it's bigger, and that's going to be the base of our cloche. And this is just going to be a little miniature cloche with a nest in it. And here I am just uh, still working that nest to get it uh, kind of squished together and put my eggs in it. And then, so I'll place these eggs and then I'll put some more hairspray on it. Some more Aquanet. No, I don't have Aquanet. Uh, but I'm going to put some more hairspray on it. And it's okay that I'm getting it on these eggs because... Uh, I use chalk paint and didn't seal it anyway, so it it doesn't hurt them to have a good sealant coat. And then see how that just squishes together? That hairspray really helps to build this nest. And now it's ready for that little cloche. And I'm just using that little light cover there as a cloche. And uh, just stick it over that little base. And then, uh, because it has that hole on the top and needs a little handle at the top, then I'm just using this old doorknob. And it fits in there just perfect. I don't have to glue it because of the weight, and it makes the cutest little cloche. And I thought that turned out really cute. And like I said, that's my favorite. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next video. And hope you have a great evening and a great weekend. God bless you.